continue. Hey, what's up? It's Ryan. Uh, we're here at this uh, Nintendo press event in San Francisco at the JW Marriott. Uh, Nintendo and a bunch of other third parties are showing off a bunch of games. Uh, we're here in the room. Uh, we're going to run around and uh, just give you a quick glimpse at uh, what's being shown off. Uh, right now, we're right next to Personal Trainer Cooking. It's one of the, the new games that Nintendo announced that they were uh, uh, going to be releasing uh, for the DS. Uh, as you can see uh, over here, uh, one of the, uh, the top chefs from the JW Marriott made some delicious soul. Excuse me. Uh, could, could you comment on the uh, the quality of the, uh, the the cooking? Continue. Continue. Nice. Okay. All right. Now we're in the main room and. Uh, First, uh, first game being shown over here, a little bit of uh, Animal Crossing City Folk. Personal favorite of mine, so uh, glad to see this, uh, this coming to the Wii. And, uh, and online, no less. Uh, other side of the room, we've got uh, Rhythm Heaven, uh, also known as Rhythm Tengoku, uh, and uh, Pokemon Rangers Shadows of Aomiya. Uh, I'm pretty excited about Rhythm Heaven. Uh, looking forward to getting some time with that uh, a little bit later in the day. Let's get going. Continue. Hey, what's going on? It's Ryan, and I'm uh, joined by Jason Allen from Capcom. Oh, yeah! And Jason Allen, the PR representative, to make sure that we didn't all get into too much trouble. Spit. Yo. Jason, how's it going, man? Going good, man. Uh, you're here showing off Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great punny subtitle you've got going on there. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. I try. Uh, now, uh, that was your call? Yeah, that was absolutely my call. <laughs> Can you tell us just a little bit about like what the design, design philosophy was in bringing this game to the Wii? Obviously, you know, the technical capabilities of the 360, the last platform that Dead Rising was on, much different than the Wii. Uh, and then also you've got the motion controls. So uh, just give me a little idea of, of kind of what the main uh, inspirations were. Right. So we went, we've been been really successful with what we've done with the Wii. You might remember Resident Evil 4 on the Wii. It was a huge success for us. So we wanted to make sure that when we did another Wii title, you know, with one of our popular brands, like that we did it right. So we borrowed some of the, you know, the philosophies that we and learnings that we that we had from Resident Evil 4. Um, that Wiimo is, is just way more intuitive for shooting. So we made sure that you could do that in Dead Rising Shot until you drop. Also, a lot of the, the melee capabilities are executed with the Wii control. But in terms of feature sets and, and uh, in terms of the other broader um, notions with you know the narrative and stuff. We realized like side missions and stuff that were a little bit more um, tailored for hardcore audiences. Want to make sure that um, that wasn't too overwhelming for you know a new consumer that might be interested in playing this game. So that got incorporated into the broader story. Um, a lot of the you know the weapons and stuff that there was just so many. It was just so cool on the 360 version. We consolidated a lot of that so that you might not necessarily need to use the two x four and a lead pipe. You might just need one of those. And there's been a bigger emphasis on you know the options of firearms in the game. Um, you know stuff like that. But there's also some new features like you know zombie poodles and zombie parrots. You know <laughs> stuff that wasn't in the original 360 version. So it's just it's been really fun. Now, uh, I'd, I'd say Dead Rising, probably one of the, the most hardcore games that I played uh, on my 360 yeah. at the time. Uh, uh, much fuss was made uh, on both sides of the fence about uh, the game's save system, kind of how it progressed. Is Chop Till You Drop going to address this at all, or is it yes. uh, sticking the same? Yes, it's going to be a lot more casu casu casually pitched. So we, we've taken that out, where you don't have those, like, tough um, time constraints that you have to meet those so for those those tight tight stuff where you're on the other side of the mall and the, you know things are too tough to be able to you know execute on the other side of the mall so I always felt so horrible whenever I was unable to save someone you see the countdown going like, oh that person's dead has the uh, the size of the mall of the, of the environment has that been altered at all no details on that yet, so you're, gonna, you're just going to have to wait to play the final version. All right, I think I've, I've found my uh, my limit for questions that I can ask, Jason. Do <laughs> uh, you guys have a street date for this yet? No street date yet. We're just saying winter at this time. Excellent. Jason, thanks for your time. Thanks, man. Continue. All right, rounding it out back in the corner, which I, I don't think I can actually show you. I should probably just block it out. Mad World is back there. Talk to the folks. No, uh, oh. no, no, no filming, no. Uh, the, uh, the talked to the Sega folks earlier, and uh, Platinum Games still really iffy about uh, letting people shoot video of it or even play it. So uh, the demos being given of that here right now are uh, are second hand only, which is uh, unfortunate because I really want to see how that game handles. And then uh, rounding it out in the back there, we've got uh, Raving Rabbids TV Party. 
Hey fans of GiantBomb.com, this is Beetle Ubisoft. I'm here with Ryan, and we're going to check out Raymond Raving Rabbit's TV party. I'm, a, I'm on the floor down here. I'm sitting on the balance board, and uh, we're going to try out some of the, the new balance board games in Raymond Raving Rabbit's TV party. So uh, Mike's going to walk us through it, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, I'll make a horrible fool of myself. So as Ryan goes down the mountain, he's actually going to be leaning left oh. and right to steer. Oh, God. He had to calibrate the uh, Wii balance board specifically for his butt, because no two butts are alike. You're doing good, Ryan. I'm impressed. Sabotage mode is actually you can have other players uh, Flink and throw uh, snowballs at the uh, screen, kind of disrupting your vision, making it more difficult to go down the mountain. But I figure since it's Ryan's first time, I wouldn't do that to the guy. Nice. Oh, oh no, I lost oh, it. Oh, no. I'm falling off. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. All right, back in it, back in it. Nice. There you go. Awesome. Well done. <laughs> so are there uh, are there other uh, balance board specific games in here? Yes, there is. And I'd be more than happy to have you try out uh, one of the other ones we have called Sky Surf. Want to try it out? Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Let's go to it. There you go. Oh. will be uh, kind to Ryan and, and not sabotage him. But in the real game, you can actually sabotage your uh, oh. your friends or enemies. Oh. Come on, find it, find it, Davis. Very impressive. So that one's entirely with the balance board. Entirely balance board. But know that uh, of the 50 mini games, 30% use the balance board. But if you don't have a balance board, you can still actually play all of them. Excellent. So you're not out without it. But if you have one, it's just that much more fun. So the, this is a, we're, we're playing the Wii version. Are you guys planning on bringing this to any other platforms? Uh, there is a Nintendo DS version that will be coming out in the holiday season as well. Excellent. You got a, a hard date for this yet? This is coming out November 11th. Excellent. Matter of fact. Well, uh, sir, thank you for your cool. time. Thank you. I'll give you your mic back. <laughs> Continue. And here we come into the uh, the horseshoe where uh, where the real action is. Apparently, We've got Call of Duty World at War on the Wii. They're uh, I believe they're showing off some of the co-op stuff, which uh, I'm I'm interested to to take a look at. Uh, the Conduit. Let's go see that. Hi, this is Eric Knopfinger from High Voltage Software, and we're going to be taking Ryan through the Conduit here at uh, Nintendo's Media Summit out in glorious San Francisco. So uh, I'm excited to play this, Eric, because there's been a, a lot of really positive buzz on this game. Uh, for the, the folks who haven't heard much about it yet, you want to give us a, just a kind of quick rundown of what The Conduit's all about? Absolutely. The, uh, the Conduit is a, uh, a AAA first-person shooter, uh, specifically uh, made from the ground up for core gamers. Uh, exclusively on Nintendo Wii. Um, this is something we're really proud of and something we're trying to push a lot of the uh, gameplay and graphical and technical abilities of the system. Now I see we've got the uh, the Washington Monument here on the screen so obviously we're, we're going to Philly. Yeah, I, I, exactly. We're going to, actually this is set in Texas, our <laughs> nation's cap capital. No, this is uh, Washington, D.C. Um, the locations are all real world uh, with some artistic license taken here and there. Not too many alien invasions that I know of yet. But that you know uh, of. Yeah, exactly. That's it's very scary. Uh, there's <laughs> a, there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of recognizable landmarks. We've got the Jefferson Memorial, we've got the Pentagon, we have uh, the Oval Office, uh, Library of Congress. You get to fight in a lot of cool places. But this demo, we're actually going to be fighting in sort of a uh, this is new for uh, uh, for this uh, demonstration today, 
and this is the third level in the game. It's sort of a Cold War bunker. Um, the, at PAX, we showed a bit more of our outdoor environments, and this is showing a little bit more of our indoor environments. And what's cool about this is it's showing a lot of our cool uh, environment mapping. We've got the cool light maps going on and dynamic lights, so you'll notice the characters have shadows and there's, uh, you'll notice there's bump mapping, so the characters are all very detailed and the hands and the, and the weapon has reflection on it. Um, that was, when you did the reload there, that was kind of cool because it showed off uh, our depth of field. Um, when you swap out to a weapon with, uh, with uh, a scope, you'll be able to go into a scope mode as well and that'll have, that also shows off our depth of field. Pretty, uh, pretty speedy on the, uh, oh, the handling, I've noticed. Well, yeah. Well, that right now it's it's uh, it's tweaked out probably a little fast. You can't. One of the things that a key selling point for the game is customized control. If you want to stop here for a second and just hit uh, hit your pause there. So if you hit one, oh. Or you can pull go. up the all seeing eye, <laughs> which is also very cool. If you go here and go to options and control setting, controller options. You go to control sensitivity. Go ahead and hit yes, because this is basically saying, hey, do you want to do this? This is still real time. Uh, so you can change out your, your turning speed, your cursor sensitivity, any, this is very, very customizable where you can ch change how fast you're turning around and all this stuff. Um, you maybe want to switch out to a weapon. So if, oh, you, yes. if, you, if, you, if you want to hit the plus again to... Oh. Sorry. Plus Hit again. plus again. You should put away your. Is it not putting it no, away? No, it's not having it. This is uh, this is a final build. So <laughs> no. This is uh, how it'll work in the game. This then. is how it's. It, if it's not working here, it's just not going to work. <laughs> no, it, this is this is a pre-alpha build. I All should right. point out. I'll, so uh, go ahead and hop out of this, and then and then sw switch out to your switch out to your weapon. There you go. Right. Now, now if you go into back into pause. There we are. And through the Not magic of editing, <laughs> <laughs> so, all of that will be left in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's part of the fun of demos. So, okay. so right. you can tweak out your 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 player turn speed. Like if you, on that first one, you could crank that way up, and you could be crazy squirrely fast. Whoa. Or and you can make yourself super motion sick if you want that Cloverfield experience. And then you can tweak it down. Uh, same thing with cursor sensitivity. But one of the areas that this is probably most noticeable, if you want to put this somewhere in there and just hit accept, okay. I can uh, in here go down to the, uh, adjust dead zone. Now this is where it's kind of cool because you've got actually this is your bounding box. This is your dead zone. If you, if you in that area in the middle there, when you move it around, that's just moving your cursor. Now when you move just outside of that, that's when you start turning. Oh. So you could tweak this out and you can make this real narrow. And re you could, I've seen uh, guys that are real hardcore PC uh, first-person shooter fans, and they want they they make this down to a little couple pixel box that's crazy small, and they crank up the sensitivity really hot, and that's. Uh, that's how they like to play it. Other guys will like it more like a Metroid style, and so they make it a little bit more broad and uh, a little bit uh, wider where it feels right for them. Well, it's, it's pretty interesting that uh, I, I like the idea of being able to adjust the uh, the, the dead zone for both the, the width and the height. Exactly. Because I, I can't tell you how many times in a Wii first person shooter I find myself looking at the ceiling. Yep, and because that's I, not uh, too fun. No, no, it's not. So Unless you play in Goldeneye. <laughs> in which case, you don't want to look at the ceiling at all. You just want to keep shooting forward. That's not nice. I just had to make sure. You never know. Okay, so now if you hit plus, you'll pull up your all-seeing eye. And you just hit the trigger on that. And this is one of the uses for it. It just acts as a key, and it's going to unlock a door down there. But there's a lot of different uses for this device. You can use it as a puzzle-solving element where you can solve cool puzzles that'll get you to un uh, secret areas of the game. You can also use it to reveal hidden objects and traps. 
And then um, in the harder levels of the game, you can actually even use it to reveal invisible enemies and cool alien. Dude, invisible stuff. enemies. That's not cool. It is cool. What are you doing? No, it's really cool. <laughs> it's terrifying. It's terrifying, and they're all around us right in this room now. This is actually based on reality, Ryan. <laughs> the. Uh, the general storyline there is you are a secret service agent and you have been inducted into this shadowy government organization known as the Trust. And um, oh you're uh, brought in because there's sort of these, uh, these weird kind of happenings that start occurring and it, it sort of explodes into a full-scale oh. alien invasion. You were so close. You were right there. Explodes into me dying. Yeah. What'd you think? <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah, you know what? I uh, I like the I like the speed on it. Okay, cool. I, I like the. I, I feel like there's too many. That's not a good sound. That's not our game. So uh, you, you're saying that the game's in, in pre-alpha right now? That is uh, correct. Do you guys yet have uh, a sort of a release date or yeah, uh, March zone? Yeah, March 09. March 09. Most of our content in the single player. We've got a lot of it done. We're really in a, a polish mode and a mode of focusing on incorporating feedback from fans and press and focusing uh, most of our development efforts on multiplayer. We want multiplayer to absolutely rock. And right now, we've got 16 player, uh, online multiplayer, um, deathmatch, team deathmatch, capture the flag, your traditional uh, modes there, but we really want to make sure that the multiplayer is something special and uh, is a great experience on, on the Wii for the gamers that want that. So, so one last question for you here, if you can answer it. What is the conduit? Oh, that's that's a secret. You'll find that <laughs> out in the game. But the oh. conduit, that's part of the story. All right. You gotta, you, I, I don't want to be a spoiler. To be continued. To be the... All right. Well, uh, Eric, thanks for, uh, for giving us some time with the game. Absolutely. Anytime. Continue. And then rounding it out, we've got uh, Castlevania, Order of Ecclesia, and Age of Empires Mythologies. Uh, and that's that's everything that's being shown here. Now uh, now that we've given you a, a little taste of, of what's out here, i got to go and play the damn stuff. So uh, I'm going to go get to it. You can play with your ass. Continue. Certainly an interesting way to, to make use of the hardware. <laughs>